Thanks for joining us today, Ray. I'm Rick? Glad to be here again. You know what I'm saying? Cool. <laughs> what's new in uh, Rick's world right now? Wow, what's new right now? Since the last time me and you talked? Yeah. Well, a lot of things. I added I added artists to my uh, to my resume now. I have about six artists signed to me. Um, we've been touring, doing a lot of shows. Just left Arizona last week. Uh, getting ready to go up to Portland, uh, Washington D.C. I just left Washington D.C. and off the change in Washington D.C. Man. If you ever go to Washington, D.C., you got to go and see Stadium, man. That guy at Stadium's treated me like a king there. That's Shout awesome. out to Stadium. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, um, you know, I kind of want to bring it back a little bit and talk about the old Rick Ross, <coughs> okay? And so, you know, back then, uh, by the time you were incarcerated, you were like, what, worth $600 million? That's what the judge said? Yeah, the yeah. prosecutor said something like that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you were making upwards to about uh, two million dollars a day from sometimes you know, three, sometimes, sometimes three, right? Yeah, yeah. I was making at least a million dollars every day, and then there would be days that I would make from one million to three million. Wow! So it might it might be a million and a half, might be two million, might be two and a half million. Yeah. So that would fluctuate from day to day. You yeah. Know, what what type of number I did about who came to me. Up that day. Well, they also say that you also had like thousands of uh, employees and drug dealers that were under you at the time. I mean, you know, to work in that industry, how, how what was it like managing like so many people, and you know, how, how did you do it? Well, you know, you have to have an attitude of of, of caring about people. Right. I mean, and, and it, you know, when I say tell that to people, they like, oh man, you sold drugs. How can you care about people? But you really do have to care about people. Uh, what a lot of people don't understand is when I first started selling drugs, I didn't understand the. Uh, to neg the negative effects of the drugs, you know. Only thing I knew is that every time people get ready to go party, you know, they wanted to be high. So I related it to having fun, and, and it was a while before I found out the negative effects, but I really, really genuinely love people. Right now, like startups, uh, small businesses are like booming in Silicon Valley, Silicon Beach and everything, right? You know, one of the biggest things that people worry about is, you know, maybe having a partner or an investor like screw them over. You know, during during your days in the industry that you worked in, um, it could mean sometimes mean your life if you get screwed absolutely, over or betrayed. Absolutely. If, I mean, if, uh, uh, if somebody robs you or something or steals your dope, a lot of people would, would go out and, and kill them. I didn't look at it like that because when, when I started in a business, I vowed that I would never hurt anybody over money. And I believe that that helped me to stay out of prison right now. Mm. And do you also think that that's why you had so many loyal like you know, people that were under you because like oh, you, you practice? Absolutely. You know, when my guys would go to prison, I would go out and I would try to get them the best attorney that I could. Right. I would try to bail them out of jail immediately and do all the things that they needed to, 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 to put their life back on track. Right. Because that's the way I would have wanted somebody to do for me. Right. Well, you have five businesses now? I mean, I'm curious. I'm At curious least five. <laughs> you know, in, in India, they sacrifice their hair. And in America, women are fascinated with Indian hair. Right. You know, they, they, they pay a lot of money for it. So what I did is, is I saved some money, and I started sending my money over to India to get hair and bring it back, and I would sell it to beauticians and, 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 and just girls in general, you know, uh, at a deal. You know, I would only make a small percentage off of it, but my goal was to do it like I did with, with drugs, make a small percentage, but sell to a lot of people. Right. Well, um, what's, uh, since you're, you're dabbled on a lot of projects and everything, is there something specific that you're like most passionate, passionate about doing? Uh, right now, uh, I'm really passionate about my web properties. You know, uh, even though I, I've been not having good luck with programmers, you know, finding good, smart uh, computer programmers is really tough. Uh, uh, but I, I'm going to figure it out. You know, I keep trying and keep nibbling. And, you know, one time I got ranked as high as 70,000 in the U.S., which is pretty good, and, and my goal then was to get down to around 25. I'm really passionate about that. I'm really passionate about my t-shirts right now. Right. You know, these are my new t-shirts. The real Rick Ross is not a rapper. Sold about 5,500 so far out the trunk with no no backing, nobody. I started this company with $300. Wow. And uh, what I did is is I went through my telephone and I started asking all of my friends if they would help me sell my t-shirt. And they was like, well, how can I help you? I said, okay, if you give me $100, I'm gonna give you 10 shirts. You take the shirt, sell them for 20 bucks, 25 bucks, and you're gonna double your money. And this shirt is gonna become famous. When it becomes famous, then you're gonna be the exclusive 
sell it for your 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 particular area. You know how 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 is it going from you know making you know upwards of three million dollars a day to you know where you're at currently? Because you know you've had a lot of success. You know coming out coming out of jail, starting from scratch. Like what 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 is it like for you? I mean like you know because obviously these are these are numbers are nowhere near what you used well, to do. Well, money is not the motivating factor. Mm -hmm. You know, so many people they put money. Money is only the trophy. See, money is a trophy you get from doing a job well. And, and a lot of people don't understand that. And what they do is, is they reach for money first. Well, I'm not reaching for money. I'm reaching for development. I'm reaching for the top, the best. And I know that once you do those things, then the money is the reward. You know, when you get the cars and the houses and all those things, those are just the rewards for a job well done. And, and that's what I'm doing right now, trying to do a good job. Have you ever, um, did you always have that mindset? Because, you know, I, I, I personally know a lot of uh, young guys that made good money when, you know, they were younger. You know, the biggest motivating factor is, hey, I want to get the nice cars to get the girls and stuff like that. I mean, you know, you know it right was, now. It's, it was at one time my motivating factor, you know, the cars, the girls, you yeah. know, the girls always. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, they said the woman is the greatest motivation in the world for a man. Right. So um, everything that he does, he does for a woman. You know, they said if you took woman off the planet, man would stop eating, <laughs> stop showering, stop cutting his hair. He don't want no car no more. Uh, he don't want a house. You know, I, and it, it ain't a house if you don't have a woman in there. So uh, definitely a woman is a motivating factor. Uh, and I believe that everything we do is centered around a woman. Well, how do you gauge whether you you know you can trust working with someone or not? Like, do you have like any sort of like you know triggers? No, I take chances. I believe that everybody is telling the truth until they until they lie. So when a guy tells me that he can do this and he's that, and I believe it until it's proven otherwise. We're willing to take the risk to, you know. The only person that hasn't lost, he never played. If you play the game, you're gonna lose. You know, uh, 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 one of my teachers told me that a long time ago. He said, "Listen, Rick." The only person that's never lost, trust me, he never played. I mean, Michael Jordan, they say the greatest basketball player of all times. Check his loss record. You know, he lost a lot of games. But he still came out on top. Right. What are some things that you learned, you know, uh, during, like, your drug dealing years that resonates towards, you know, building a successful business today, you would say? So marketing, management, just everything that I do. You know, people buy from people they like. So in the drug business, people came and bought from me because not only did I have good drugs, but they also liked me. You know, they wanted to see me do good. And when people want to see you do good, they're going to help you. You know, they would rather bring their money to you because you treat them like somebody and they go to this other guy who's going to talk to them bad, cuss them out, uh, slap them when they're short. You know, my customers come to me, they were short, I would give them some on credit. You know, and, and I think people appreciated that. Uh, you know, that's why really nobody really... You know, it was only a couple people that ever testified on me. There could have been thousands of people lined up to testify against me. You know, I, I walk the streets of L.A. right now, and people walk up to me and say, Hey, I used to get drugs from you. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> your spot. I used to go to your spot. You know, I got myself together now. And, and, and when you see that and you know, like, wow, man, all these people knew you. They could have took you down, but they didn't. Right. Okay, well, I was going to talk about a rapper that you, le that you least respect. William Roberts. William Roberts. Let's call him that. Yeah. yeah, let's call him William Roberts. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why the guy don't want to use his own name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you recently challenged him to, uh, a, uh, you know, as a fun, you know, a charity boxing uh, match. Were you really serious about that? I, I mean, would, would do you, it. Yeah, would I would do it? do it for charity, you know. That guy's we, huge, though. I'm not saying you lose, but He I'm couldn't saying, hit you know. me, though. He's too fat. <laughs> he can't move. You know, I'd be doing the rope dope on him like Ali. You know, I grew up with Ali, you know, and, and, and. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I go get some training, you know, yeah. get back in shape, you know. Did you see me in the pictures when I was in jail? I can get back like that in like six months. So, you know, if we set it up, I'm going to go get back in shape, start running and, and doing all the things I need to do. Uh, uh, it was really just a joke. But if he, he accepted, you, you would do it in a heartbeat. like. Absolutely yeah. I would. I mean, for the kids, I, I, you know, I go to these schools and these kids don't have the books that they need to, 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 to turn them into entrepreneurs. Yeah. And, and I believe that the books that they, they have for our kids right now are just uh, uh, books where they just become like robots. And I believe that we have to start developing entrepreneurs and, 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 and start thinking outside the box. Thank you. Thank you.